schools. We feel in wartime comradeship and we confuse this with friendship, with love. There are those who will insist that the comradeship of war is love, the ecstatic glow that makes us in war feel as one people, as one entity, is real. But this is part of war's intoxication. Think back on the days after the attacks of 9-11. Suddenly, we no longer felt alone. We connected with strangers, even with people we did not like. We felt we belonged, that we were somehow wrapped in the embrace of the nation, the community. In short, we no longer felt alienated. As this feeling dissipated in the weeks after the attack, there was a nostalgia for its warm glow. And wartime always brings with it this comradeship, which is the opposite of friendship. Friends, as J. Glenn Gray points out in his book, The Warriors, Reflections on Men in Battle, are predetermined. Friendship takes place between men and women who possess an intellectual and emotional affinity for each other. And many of us will admit that we never really had a friend, and even the most fortunate of us have very few. But comradeship, that ecstatic bliss that comes with belonging to the crowd in wartime, is within our reach. We can all have comrades. The danger, the external threat that comes when we have an enemy does not create friendship. It creates comradeship. Those in wartime are deceived about what they are undergoing. And this is why once the war ends, these comrades again become strangers to us. This is why after war, we fall into despair. In friendship, there is a deepening of our sense of self. We become, through the friend, more aware of who we are and what we are about. We find ourselves in the eyes of the friend. Friends probe and question and challenge us to make each more complete. They draw the secrets out of us and know our inner core of being. For we reach and change others and we are changed. When we plunge to the depths of our inner life, the depths that expose our insecurities, our incompleteness, those depths that often lie beyond articulation. In comradeship, the kind that comes to us in patriotic fervor, there is a suppression of self-awareness, self-knowledge, self-possession. Comrades lose their identities in wartime for the collective rush of a common cause, the common purpose. They are like erotic lovers. In comradeship, life is ecstatic in corporate as opposed to friendship, where life is singular and individual. In comradeship, Gray reminds us, there are no demands on the self, and this is part of its appeal and one of the reasons we miss it and seek to recreate it. Comradeship allows us to escape the demands on the self that is part of friendship. And this is why once the war is over, once the danger that linked us together is past, these feelings are extinguished. Sebastian Hoffner was a lawyer in Nazi Germany, wrote of this comradeship in his book, define Hitler. He noted that comradeship destroys the sense of responsibility for oneself, be it civilian or worse still, the religious sense. Comradeship always sets the cultural tone at the lowest possible level, accessible to everyone, he wrote. It cannot tolerate discussion. In the chemical solution of comradeship, Discussion immediately takes on the color of whining and grumbling. It becomes 
a mortal sin. Comradeship admits no thoughts, just mass feelings of the most primitive sort. These, on the other hand, are inescapable. To try and evade them is to put oneself beyond the pale. In wartime, when we feel threatened, we no longer face death alone, but as a group, and this makes death easier to bear. We ennoble self-sacrifice for the other, for the comrade. In short, we begin to worship death. And this is what the god of war demands from us. Think finally of what it means to die for a friend. It is deliberate and painful. There is no ecstasy. For friends, dying is hard and bitter. The dialogue they have and cherish will perhaps never be recreated. Friends do not the way comrades do love death and sacrifice. To friends, the prospect of death is frightening. And this is why friendship, or let me say love, is the most potent enemy of war.